I watched her as a young girl and I told her when it comes to hair, I'm always a little girl because I, I put myself in that state of mind all the time, watching her read the news on GTV. She went on later to start her own show and for 15 solid years, she's been doing this. It's such a massive feat, one that should not be ever underestimated. She's an achiever, she's an inspirer, and she's an old student of my school. A brand new wearable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm happy to be associated with her. I'm speaking to Gifty Auntie this morning. The standpoint at 15. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Let me start this way. When did you conceptualize this? And how did you start bringing it to life? Okay, thank you very much. And it's a privilege to have you interview me. That's the first time, you know, you interview. So I'm really excited about that. It started when I came back after my master's in 2006, I wanted to, I came by, you know how when after your school, you're all ginger and, and energetic and how you want to cause change. And I was privileged to have a feminist, uh, Christabel Kane, who was the first female um, anchor for BBC World um, to be my journalism lecturer for my master's in international journalism. And, she wanted me to stay to be her tea, and I said, no, I had to come back. And then she made me promise that when I come back, I'm going to be a voice for not just Ghanaian women, but women across Africa, because she was married to a Ugandan, and she had traveled Africa and knew some of the challenges. I came back. I tried to force that. It wasn't working. So somebody actually made a comment. Well, if, if you are interested, so much interested, go and start your own show. Mm. And I took it World Cup. So I started preparing. And then 2008... I decided to actualize it, to let it come to life. And the program was birthed. And it's been 15 years. 15 years. How have you sustained this for 15 <laughs> years? As a media person, I know and I understand the challenges. And, you know, to even constantly hold your viewers for that long, yeah. that in itself yeah. is such a chore. Yeah. How have you done it? That's, that's what I call a blessing, mm. you know. Simply grace of God. You just have to... Make sure, you know, I believe that where God um, leads or guides, he provides. Right. You need to believe in what you're doing. I mean, after the first, I remember, even when I was starting, uh, I remember a minister then made a comment that the name standpoint is too hard, you know. <laughs> so we need to get a you know, softer name for it and then it won't fly. People said that, you know, doing a show to talk about issues, affecting women will not be willing. I mean, we had all that. But by the grace of God, I've always believed in this. Mm. The feedback has always kept me going. I always make sure that every year there's something new, something dynamic about the show that will keep uh, people glued to it. This year, to mark the 15th anniversary, the first program we did was rededicate the studio and dedicated a new set. Okay. We built a new set, changed everything to give it a new outlook. Personally, it gives you a kind of yeah. new energy. Right. You know, I love red anyway, so yeah. give you new. Nice. So it, give, it renews your mind psychologically mm -hmm. and then for your viewers as well. So every time I'm doing something new, changing the dynamic, changing the, the, the narrative. So, and... I am somebody who's also social media very active. Mm -hmm. So I use social media, yeah, to, really, social media. to really push it, to really push yeah. it. Yeah. You're so inspired. And I know I've been seeing the testimonies, people writing about what an inspiration you are. But here's what you've decided to do, which for me is so exciting. You've decided to put all your emotions, your thoughts, your, your life, your learnings, your mistakes, everything into books for us to read and even for future generations. Yeah. Just, how did you start writing? And I can see <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, five six. Six yes. books. Wow. So, a bit of me was the first one. Mm -hmm. um, I started a segment of the show. As I said, every year I want to change something. So about six years ago, I started a new segment called A Bit of Me. It's like my opinion, my, um, my take mm -hmm. as, you know, something laddie, I only call it my take on issues. And... In 2009, I had an accident. It broke my ankle, and I was nearly pushed to depression. But then somebody was sending a general broadcast, 
and it was about one of my videos mm -hmm. encouraging people never to stop, to keep going irrespective, regardless of, and it encouraged me, it just woke me up. So I just told myself, listen, for years, people have been telling me to write. If I write a book, this is there, you have it. Anytime you are going through something, you remember that, listen, let me encourage myself. It's not every time you get somebody to encourage you. If I hadn't received that video, videos will get lost. Audios may be corrupted, but books, unless it gets bent, will always be there. So that's what started my journey. And within four, months, four years, I'm about to release my seventh book. Tell us about it, The Black Chalewati. The Black Chalewati, is, is, it's, it talks about the crazy life of mothers. Mm. You know, and... <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> the crazy life. One day I was actually um, rushing, taking my little girl to school. And um, in the middle of the motorway, I realized that I was wearing black chalewati. I didn't have a spare... <laughs> shoe in the car, I didn't have any spare shoes in the office. And I had meetings that day. I had no choice than to put myself together to drop her off at school. I get to the office and then my staff tell me that actually the dress I was wearing, I turned it inside out. And I dropped her at school, interrupted with parents and everything. I didn't even know what I was doing. So I wrote about it on Facebook. And the Reverend Alberto Kran said, Gift, you know what? I think you must write this book, yes. The Black Chalote. Yes. So this Black Chalote talks about my journey with her. But we go deeper into issues of fertility, mm. infertility, challenges of the options, you know, the traumas that you have to go on, um, go through IVF, misconceptions about IVF, traumas of failed IVF, challenges of professional women raising children. Challenges of late bloomers like me. You know, sometimes you go, you go with your, like, I'm 53, my little girl is now going to be six years. And you're always calculating, hey. so by the time I'm 60, <laughs> she's now 18. She's this, you go yes, to places yes. where sometimes people say, oh, your granddaughter. You know, but people like me, I can handle it. I'll definitely tell you, I tell my story, but not everybody can handle it. Mm. I remember years ago, somebody even made a comment before I even thought I could have a child. Somebody made a con gift. I think you should discuss, you know, challenge of late bloomers because it's not easy. It's not easy. So it, it, it talks about all these issues. And of course, there's a lot of laughter in the, you know, the funny things. They carry the fears of even carrying pregnancy to term and all that. So that's what the book. Is. We will be looking out for this book. And it's, it's to commemorate the standpoint at 15. You can follow Hiniyeri Gifty Auntie on social media and follow the standpoint. There's, there's so many things that have to be done to celebrate this. But this is all time will allow me. But I promise you we will do a proper sit down okay. and have conversations because I'm interested yeah. about this. Okay. Uh, but about the I, details of the book. Can ching, uh, chip in that on uh, 23rd of August, okay. we are having an international conference to mark the oh, wow. standpoint at 15 wow. at La Palm Royal Beach. Lema uh, Roberta Bowie, the 2011 Nobel Peace Prize uh, recipient, is our keynote speaker. It's at 9 a.m. It's open to all. And then the Palm Royal, Royal Beach, Beach Hotel, 23rd, August. 23rd August. And then 9th of September, we are going to Gomua Fete to feed about 150 uh, pregnant women. You know, so please, anybody who wants to come on board should, you know, call 0543-618182. 0543-618182. Thank you. A lot of love from my heart to yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ohiniri Gifty Auntie, for all that you do. Like I said, we need to do a proper review of that book and a couple others that she's written. Okay.